not exactly a comfortable ride, and it's not exactly nimble. Coming in. There's a flight crashed, killing ballpark 200 people. That'll be the easiest thing we've ever done with a cows. Got a wee party of cows following me this morning. Morning, Holly. What a beast. Big breakdown. This is real working there. Today, cattle need to go down to the abattoir, just the way to feed these calves, uh, and then we're going to move all these calves later on today once I'm back from the abattoir along the road to where they're going to be through the winter, um, and then the cows can come into here as well. This cow with the, the bad back legs, she's definitely improved quite a lot. Come on. Oh, she's way better. Good beast. That's good. Trimming her foot obviously did the job, did the trick. Calves are all wiring in, all looking well. Hey beasts, hey. Dad's just putting the livestock trailer on there so we can shift cattle. That's the three beasts in there. Um, I haven't seen a man about a dog. Dad went and loaded them. Um, so I'm just going to wait to take them down to the abattoir. Movements are filled in, so you have to fill in a date. When we get them, we fill in a date to say they've arrived on our farm and then the date is filled in of today to say they're leaving the farm. One, two, three, and a sticker with our address and holding number. That's that, three passports, three cattle. Here we go, hopefully the right passports. No key. That's the cattle dropped off at the abattoir there. They'll arrive back at home in roughly 10 days and they'll hang for another couple of weeks after that. They've kind of been hung back for about three to four weeks by the time they get to the customer. Just got off the phone with Dad. One of the cows has got his foot stuck in a, in the straw feeder. To manage to, you have to get a grinder and cut bits off the feeder to get it out, but it's not now getting up. Which is... I don't know, we need to see it when we get back. It's not looking good. He doesn't think it's broken, but it doesn't sound good so far. Just as I've, I've arrived, she's tried to stand up. She's up on her feet, so... That's better news, it's a bit cut and... I'll just show you this now. More kind of been rubbing, I think, than anything. Right, I'm out the wind. Not as worried as I was when Dad phoned. There's a lot of redness round about it and raw skin, but I think that's kind of from rubbing, she must have been trying to get out. There's a bit of swelling on the joint. She's she's up, she's standing up now. That must be the first time she's got up and she took a wee step and moved along the fence line. So she's not too bad. We'll get her in, bit of anti-inflammatory, probably injection, spray all the red rawness uh, with some teramycin and just keep an eye on her, get her inside, get her out of the wet. She should be fine. I think she'll be all right. So she's put her foot through that gap right there. Well, it's been cut wider, but she's put basically her foot, her hoof, she's put her hoof through one of these gaps. It's obviously got stuck at probably the, in, in between the hoof and the knuckle um, of the joint. And Dad's had to cut a bar out there with a grinder to get her out of it. But that's a fair height off the ground to be stepping into. Don't know how she's managed that. And then she fell over. You can see why she's hurt herself. Anyway, we'll bring her into the hospital next to the other coup that's in there already, in for treatment. The other one's recovered. Hopefully this one will be fine as well. Right, just set up some pens uh, in where the calves are so we can run some in and then up the trailer. Here. Just need to shift the cattle, which are here and here, over to that 
pen right over there and then the calves will all go in here so we'll just shift these around there there's still three over that side there i'll just open that gate over there and once that's open i can swing these around you can see the other three just bobbing their heads there there you go go on and you go that's a piece come on that was easy come on Come on, beast. Come on. That's the first six. Right, back for load number two. We've got two sets of seven to get in now. The first load was quite chunky one, so... And there was a stubborn one that wouldn't go in, so... Hopefully now we'll get two sets of seven. And we'll just be able to do it in two trips. That's the next. We've got seven in this time, so that leaves us seven left. Next seven here, so that'll be 13. Cabs along, seven to go. The first ones, they're still there anyway, they're still in the pen. Final seven, these were a wee bit tricky to load. Anyway, they're in and they're just about to be out. That's them all. Just give them a bit of bedding straw and some straw to munch as well before we go uh, and some grub because they're getting fed morning and afternoon at the moment. So, afternoon feed. It's not a quiet machine, this old man into. I don't think they had their decibel levels as a law when this was made. I quite like it though. It's not exactly a comfortable ride and it's not exactly nimble and agile but that's ah, fine. Bales of bed and just get another one for them to munch on this side of the, the grid. These are new jeans, these only three or four days old, covered in sh already. Right, these gates will get round to kind of cordon off the bit till I get the cows in. Hopefully, the cows will come in no bother. We've not got the quad bike either to round them up still. Got a phone call about the quad bike heads working now they're just going to service it they've not had straw today and um, so we'll put a straw feeder into where we want them to be and hopefully i'll just chuck a bale of straw in and they'll wander in just like that it'll be the easiest thing we've ever done with the cows does it look tasty enough to come out in the field for I didn't 
think they were going to come in. Second attempt, they all charged them. So they're going in there now. They're all now in there, bar one. The one that's not in there is the one with a sore leg because she couldn't move quick enough. So we just left her. We'll go get her now. She should be easy enough. There she is, right in the corner. She's stubborn. D, she's limping on the front left, but she's not that bad considering. And as you can see, the, the left leg is much more swollen than the right leg. It's much puffier. She's in. Oh yeah, she's all up the inside there. Like you can see on the camera. Yeah. Just give it a oh, Just give it another go. Put it, put it back. Yeah. I was on a beach in Portugal yesterday. That wheat that they put in not how long ago, it's just about through the ground. If right down there we've started sowing. Just just about peeking through now. Also soaking wet, still. Holes filled up with water, but hopefully that's uh it's not mains water. It's not, it's all dirty. It'd be clear if it was mains water. That's fine. That's just the way to take that trailer off, clearing up the gates. That's that job dealt with. Just picked up this van. I probably dropped it off in the last video. Um, I had issues, but I think it's just a battery issue. It's not building up fuel pressure. Right, it takes a while to build up the fuel pressure um, because it's on a low battery, so that's why it turns over for a while, for quite a while, then starts. Just the problem is with it, it's turning over a lot because it's start, stop, start, stop. It's just on the farm, this vehicle. So start, drive, an eighth of a mile. Stop, turn it off, start it again. So it's turning over loads. Using the starter motor quite a lot, that draws quite a lot of current. So you end up around down the battery and it doesn't get a chance to charge up through the day. Yesterday's question of the day, what was this on the airplane? and it's a pilot tube and basically measures the speed of the aircraft. Also, you get a sensor which is very similar looking, which looks like this. Um, and that's an angle of attack sensor and that's really quite interesting. The angle of attack sensor is basically a vane that sits on the outside of the aircraft. Say this is the airplane. It sits on the outside um, and it acts like a flag. So it points parallel to the direction of travel. So the, the aircraft knows relative to the airflow where it is. So that's what the angle of attack sensor is for. And why it's interesting, I'm gonna explain now. If, you, if you're not interested in this, it's nothing to do with farming, then skip to whatever time it says there, or I might say it there, I'm not sure, but skip to there if you're not interested. So a few years ago now, Boeing wanted to upgrade the engines on their 737 to these kind of bigger, newer engines which have a bigger bypass ratio, basically long story short, and more efficient. So instead of redesigning a brand new aircraft, which they had to go through loads and loads of legislation and it costs an absolute fortune, they just altered their current aircraft and basically put on these big new engines. Obviously they, they're bigger and they weigh a lot more, so the balance of the aircraft was different. Effectively, what that did was change the balance point. So let's say the center of mass is right where my finger is right now on the aircraft and the aircraft is designed around that, it's all good. And the autopilot works based on this. But if you add a new engine, which was mounted further forward, I think slightly, you change the center of mass to slightly further forward. So it wants to nose dive a wee bit. So they designed a software MCAS, Movement Characteristics Augmentation System. That's what it is. And it was to counteract this new mass when it was on autopilot so it wouldn't nosedive. But when doing that, they only took into account one sensor, one of those angle of attack sensors. Most aircrafts are designed with redundancy, which is basically having multiple sensors so that if one fails, you've got backup. But the software only took into account one of the sensor readings, which meant if it failed, the, the autopilot system failed and that's exactly what happened. So I think it was 2017, there was a flight crashed, killing ballpark 200 people, um, which on the flight data, 
showed the aircraft over the period of about 10 minutes going from a horizontal position to slowly creeping down and back up, down and back up until it was pointing like that and it basically flew itself into the ground. And I don't think the flights were grounded at all. It just went down as a bit of a freak accident. Four months later, same thing happened again. This brand new aircraft, the 737 Boeing Max, which was actually not a brand new aircraft, it was just a redesigned aircraft. The fleet was totally grounded to figure out what was wrong. And then they came, they found out that this was the reason. And basically, because they hadn't wired in the second angle of attack sensor into um, the, the software, that's why it crashed. If it had had a second or a third um, sensor wired in, it would have been fine. They basically cut a lot of corners to get this flight, this airplane in the sky as quick as they could um, to, I think it was keep up with like Airbus and stuff, which are their main rivals. They had to keep up with them so they were pushing it through and um, trying to get kind of all the regulatory bodies ticking all the boxes, no problem. Um, and that ended up in these two flights tumbling out of the sky. And I think they're now going again, the flights, and um, the 737 MAX, but it's quite a funny one because, um, so Boeing's American and Airbus is like European um, based, and they're the two biggest um, aircraft manufacturers in the world. And they, directly our competitors. So the um, American kind of aviation authorities let some of Boeing's own staff members or own team carry out the tests on some of the new equipment or the new aircraft effectively. Um, and I think they've been doing that for years, basically they've not got enough money and all that. But yeah, they, they let it out to Boeing to do themselves and that also didn't help. Anyway, Back to some farming.